All right, we're going to read now Babes at Bat, Babe Ruth and Babe Dedrickson. So we already did our questions to see what we're looking for. We have a pencil, pen, and highlighter nearby. Um, so let's go ahead and let's annotate our text and look for some important things. Here we go. Babe Ruth and Babe Dedrickson were both athletes. It didn't seem likely either would make the big leagues. Dedrickson had too few chances to play. Ruth's troublemaking seemed like likely to keep him out of the game. So here we see in what they have in common. They didn't seem likely to play. Um, the chances were slim. Why were the chances slim for them? Well, let's highlight for them both. It was slim for Didrickson because it says there were too few chances. And it seems slim for Ruth because um, he was a troublemaker. So important for us to remember. Looks like first we're going to learn about Babe Ruth. Let's read. The year was 1920. Baseball was at an all-time low. The last World Series had been rigged. People had lost respect for baseball. Then, a great Boston Red Sox pitcher was sold to the New York Yankees. His smile and his swing coaxed fans back to the game. In 1902, no one would have guessed George Ruth would one day be a baseball legend. That year, the seven-year-old was sent to live with priests. Ruth was already chewing tobacco, cussing, and acting tough. His parents hoped the church could turn the boy around. Wow, that's important. Um, the word priest is right here. I believe um, that was one of our questions with the word priests. So I'm going to highlight this sentence. He was sent to live with priests. Um, I'm also going to mark in my text some of the um, not so good things that George Ruth did um, at the age of seven. Um, he chewed tobacco. That's one bad thing. He cussed. That's another bad thing. He acted tough. That's another bad thing. Um, so things for us to remember. I'm also going to write here on the side that he was a bad boy. Let's turn the page. Brother Matthias did more than that. He taught Ruth to read, write, and play baseball. Ruth learned to play ball so well, in fact, that the manager of a pro team came to watch him play. Jack Dunn liked what he saw. He asked Ruth to play with the Baltimore Orioles. At 19, Ruth did. The coach had found himself a new babe. Um, I remember Brother Matthias, uh, Matthias being um, in one of the questions. I can't quite, you know, it's something that stands out right now. So I'm going to make sure I highlight that. Um, and then it's also probably important for us to know um, his start. He started on the Baltimore Orioles at 19. Next, Ruth played for the Boston Red Sox. With them, he was one of the best pitchers of his day. But more amazing was his swing. He was so prone to hit home runs, he began to play outfield. Ruth's batting talent was too valuable. He had to play a position that allowed him more, the most batting time. So, easy for us again. We should also highlight Boston Red Sox because that's another team that he played with. Um, we also want, probably want to remember his um, positions. He started out as a pitcher, then he played outfield. Um, important things for us to know. The Red Sox coach made a good choice. In 1919, Ruth set a new home run record at 29. The next year, he joined the Yankees. While with them, he broke his own record. This time, he hit 60 home runs in a season. He became known as the Sultan of Swat. He led his league in home runs during 12 seasons. In all, he belted 714 home runs. Lots of numbers here um, that are probably important for us to know. Um, you know, his grand total of home runs that he had in his career, 714. We're going to write grand total because he did not do that all in one year. That's all of his years combined. Um, we probably want to highlight his nickname. Important for us to remember, maybe. Last paragraph. Babe Ruth became a star. He awed his fans on and off the field.
Whatever made him a wild child stayed with him as an adult. Ruth smashed up fast cars. He argued loudly with his coach. He ate and drank too much. He stayed up all night on game nights. He also showered with fan showered his fans with smiles, waves, and autographs. So this last part, not so bad. He showered his fans with smiles, waves, autographs. That means that he was very friendly with his fans. However, here we have some other things that, you know, again, that whole bad boy thing comes up here. And why he wasn't a very good person. Babe Ruth changed the face of baseball. Hitters no longer played it safe. Fans wanted to see hard hitters. They wanted to see the babe. The cussing, surly child had grown into a big hit. All right. So there's our section about Babe Ruth. Now we're going to move into the other babe, um, Babe Derdrickson. So, which it says right here, Babe Derdrickson. Mildred Derdrickson was born in 1914. Babe grew up in a large, active family. As a child, she ran races. She roller skated. She played ball in a gym her dad built in the backyard. She earned her nickname in grade school when she hit five home runs in one game. By high school, she excelled in volleyball, tennis, baseball, basketball, and swimming. Um, I remember this coming up at some point. Um, the you know there that her dad built something in the backyard so i'm going to highlight that um just to remember because i feel like that came up when we were reading our questions um we probably also want to keep in mind all of the sports that she was good at that's a lot of sports she was good at volleyball tennis baseball basketball and swimming important five sports that she was good at there were no major league ball teams for women in the 1930s. Still, Babe found ways to play sports. At 18, she led her works basketball team to a national championship. That year, she also broke four world records in amateur track events. Um, I remember there also being a question about um, sports in the 1930s, so I'm going to highlight that because right here in this sentence, we see 1930s. So I'm going to highlight this first sentence because it reminds me of that question. Um, other things important to know, she got a national championship, um, and not even on a regular basketball team, but with her works basketball team. Um, and she also broke four world records in amateur track events. In 1932, Babe qualified for five Olympic events. Women could only play in three of them then. She won the javelin gold. She won the 80 meter hurdles gold. She broke a high jump record. The judges didn't like her style. They gave her the silver. Okay, so again, here's the Olympic events. She qualified for five, but at that time she could only play in three. Um, and this is in the 1930s again. Um, 1932 was within the 1930s. So here's um, some important things for us to know about women's sports then. And then it's probably also important for us to know that she won the gold in javelin, she won the gold in the hurdles, and then she won silver um, in her high jump. Next, Babe toured the nation. She played in exhibition games. She played basketball, baseball, and tennis. She bowled and shot rifles. She swam and dove. She roller skated and played volleyball. She struck out Lou Gehrig in spring training. She challenged Babe Ruth to a game of golf. Okay, so here again, lots of more sports that she played. We can see that she played basketball, baseball, tennis. She shot rifles. She bowled. She swam. She dove. She roller skated. She played volleyball. Um, and she even challenged Babe Ruth to a game of golf. In 1933, Babe settled into playing just golf. She hit thousands of balls a day. Her hands blistered and bled. She taught herself to hit 250 yards on a regular basis. Then she won 80 amateur tournaments. In 1945, she started the Ladies Pro Golf Association. She went on to win 31 LPGA events. Okay, so this whole paragraph 
is about golf and her golf career. So I wrote golf. Um, I remember this LPGA coming up in one of the questions, so we're probably going to want to um, head back here at some point. Um, I think it's also important for us to know that she won 80 amateur tournaments, um, and she could hit 250 yards. Lots of important golf terms here. In 1950, Babe was named the greatest athlete of the first half of the century. Then she succumbed to cancer. She was only 42 years old. Her short life had been packed full. Some sports scholars think Babe was the best all-around athlete, male or female, that the world has ever seen. Okay, I remember um, her death was a question, and it says right here that she succumbed to cancer at 42 years old. Succumb means to, to lose, unfortunately, so she lost her battle to cancer and died. I'm going to write death right here on the side to remember that's her death. Um, I think it's also really cool that people think of her as the best athlete in the world, male or female. She was just the best of the best. Okay, so that's the entire article. We are going to do the same thing that we did last week. Um, I would like you to answer these questions on your own. Use your text to try to find the answers. Once you've answered all 10 questions, um, you can go to video number three where we will go over the answers as well as showing you where to find them in the text.